Hello there fellow Class 47 Peter fans and welcome to another video from said user which of course this is he because it's not going to be anybody else is it I mean who else are we expecting and today's video is going to be a review yay and we have quite a few new locos to have a look at we have this made by Batman it's a 7F in BR black livery and weathered as well very nice and then we have this it is a Batman retoured Class 40 in BR Blue and they both were bought on my holiday in Dorset because as you all know I was absent for two weeks the first week I was in Dorset which is where these two models came from well they didn't actually come from Dorset they came from the Bournemouth Model Railway Centre located in Bournemouth and then the following weekend I was in Cornwall, mainly for a relative's wedding. But I decided to have the two weeks off from uploading videos on YouTube. But anyway, which locomotive are we going to have a look at today? The 7F or the Class 40? Okay, you know, you pretty much already know what this video is going to be about as soon as you click on it because the title gives it away. So in this video, we will have a look at the Batman 7F so sit back relax and enjoy and go and grab a slice of cake or a drink or whatever you like and watch the review of the 7F right so like I said we are here today to review the 7F from Batman which it has been in the shops now for a few years and it's not going to be by all means the first review because other people have already done reviews on them and like I said it came from the Bournemouth Model Railway Centre which I do recommend you check out because they literally have anything there to do with trains it's chock-a-block full of them well models anyway not the real thing but you know what I mean and as soon as I walked into the shop I saw this and I thought to myself it's got to be a 7F I have to get one of these because I have been meaning to get hold of one of these now for a long time and so when I saw it on a shelf just sitting there I thought I've got to have this definitely you know it was the perfect opportunity and so I got it basically because I think if I hadn't I would have been a fool not to because it is high time I got one of these I think I can't remember offhand how much this model cost because there is no price tag on the box and there was no price tag when I bought it what they do is they if, well they have computers in the shops I think they have a database of everything they have and how much it costs I can't remember offhand how much this model costed. It would help, and it would be better if they did put the prices on the boxes on price tags, but I can't remember how much it cost, to be honest. And it is brand new. I know the box has a few marks on it, as you can see, but trust me, this model is brand new. It's not a second-hand model. Now, like I said at the start of the video, this model is in BR black livery with the light crest, as you can see there on the tender. Most models I have have got the early emblem. There's only a few I have that has the light crest. And so I went for a light crest one, because it's nice to have a bit of variety. But, it's not just BR black with a light crest. It is also weathered. Which, this is the... Of all the locomotives I own in my collection, this is the fourth locomotive I own that is weathered. I don't normally buy very many weathered locomotives, because more often than not I buy pristine locos. But it's nice to own a few weathered locos, because again it's variety. And so I had to go for a weathered one, because it looks really nice. And I do like this model being weathered, because it shows that it's been working hard. Well, in the case of the real thing, I mean, I haven't opened this model up yet, let alone, let alone put it on the tracks and ran it. But we will do that now. So let's get this model up and see what it's like. 
And there she is. So here's the... It's the usual packaging we get from Batman now, the plastic packaging. Which I don't think it's that ideal, to be honest, or robust. Because, let's face it, if you were to drop this on the floor, I don't think it would protect it very well from gravity. This is where I think the polystyrene packaging was probably the best, really. Regardless of even if it was bad at times, but there we go. And to be honest, I preferred the polystyrene packaging from Hornby that's split in two, because that would be more protective to the model, really, but that's just me. Then on the back, we have some usual brief history for the 7F. So the 7Fs were all designed by James Clayton. Interestingly, though, some websites where I have done some research on it, it says that they were designed by Henry Fowler, which is interesting because on other websites I've got it from, says it was designed by Henry Fowler. But on other websites, including on the back of this box, it says James Clayton, the draftsman at Derby, was given a free hand to design the engine. So that means that James Clayton then was the designer of these locomotives. But there we go. See, that's why I do double check any research I do to make sure he's right. Because I do often do research on some locomotives to jot down notes so I can so I know what I'm gonna say rather than instead of reading it on the backs of the boxes and they were built at Derby Works and Robert and Stevenson and Co and 11 of these in built were total and they were built between 1914 and 1925 and these were designed specifically for heavy freight traffic and these were one of the most powerful mineral engines that ran in the UK. And they have a 280 reel arrangement. I don't really need to tell you this because all the enthusiasts already know about this. But basically, it has two wheels at the front there, eight in the middle and one at the back. So it makes it a 280. And this is the wheel arrangement that you see on freight locomotives. And at the time when this came out, it was the most modern principle for the freight locomotive, let alone being the most common one, because by this point the 060 chassis was getting on a bit, and it was outdated. <laughs> Some interesting information is that they used the G9AS boilers, which were used on the Midland compounds, <coughs> which is interesting. The cylinders are sloped to prevent it from furling the platform faces, and they have Bell pair uh, fire boxes and wall shots valve gear, which, as you can see, again just there. And Clayton provided steam brake cylinders on the locomotive due to the power needed over the Mandy Pills, as the S and D, which is quite famous, especially because these locomotives ran on the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway they needed power to go over the hills well the locomotives needed the power anyway and so James Clayton fitted steam cylinder brakes which were not just fitted to the locomotive but they were also fitted to the tender as well and this is the Midland style tender which doesn't have the water pickup apparatus because the S&D was devoid of using troughs so they therefore did not have the water scoops. And two of these have survived into preservation. There's number 88, 53029, but it's British Railway's number, on the Midland Railway Centre. Sorry, 88, 53808, sorry, on the Western Somerset Railway, and 89, 53809 on the Midland Railway Centre. Ugh. Do excuse that then. That was a moment I had. So only two have survived, 88 and 89. 88 is preserved on the West Somerset and 89 on the Midland Railway Centre Butterley. They've both steamed in preservation, however number 88 is currently undergoing an overhaul. Though she's due to come back out next year.
because he's undergone the fast track overhaul. And that's for 89. I'm not sure if it is in service at the moment. I don't think I've heard any mention of it steaming recently. So maybe it's still in service. Or maybe it's under an overhaul or something. I don't know. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And I've not seen one of these locomotives in reality. I had the opportunity to do so last year at the Seven Valley on their Autumn Steam Gala. But sadly I didn't go. Because I came down with tonsillitis for two weeks, which stopped me from going. Sod's law. But you know, I'm definitely going to be attending the gala this year because we've got Royal Scots and Britannia there, which sounds fantastic. But I'd love to see one of these in reality because they look so stunning and they are quite unique as well. But as I am planning to go to the West Somerset Railway, because it is on my bucket list of heritage railways to visit, next year, when 88 is back out in service, that might be the right time then to go, because then it's also an excuse for me to see a 7F up close and in person. Right, well, swiftly moving along, we'll get rid of the box sleeve, and we'll take out the plastic packaging, and put that to one side, and we'll tip all the stuff out the box and get rid of the tray so here we have the collector club flyer which I do not need because I I'm not really part of the Batman collectors club and so here we have the instruction manual which here is the spare care sheet on the back it's the instructions, running in, the curves it's suitable for, removing the body, DCC decoder fitting, lubricating the model, and replacement parts, which basically is this. And it also says here, the model should be handled carefully, as it has many finer detail parts, not suitable for persons under 14 years. Little niggle there, but I think that just should say people, rather than persons, but... <laughs> There we go. So I'll put those into my folder later. When I have the time. And then this is the consumer guarantee. On the back it's... Well, this is basically the date when I bought it. And that's the model and that's the reference number. And that's just been done there for the guarantee in case. If this model doesn't work when I put it on the tracks it can go back to Batman and whatever happens, happens on from there, basically. It's the usual stuff. That's just that stamp they put on. Batman approved stock list. And that's the model shop where this came from, Bournemouth Model Railway Centre. So if you want to check it out, I do so. Because I do recommend you do visit them, if you ever go anywhere near Bournemouth, that is. But I will not get rid of that, because it is important. Especially because I've not ran this locomotive yet. And to be honest, I think before we look at it in detail off camera, I might have to put it on the tracks to give it a quick test run. Just to make sure it works. But I'm sure it will. So that is the plastic sleeve that we'll put to one side. And then here are the details to put on the locomotive which I will put on later I mean this review has been done at the evening because it's been raining all day and this is the only time I have now to do the review before it gets dark because I didn't really want to say this until the next day to review it but there we go so we have chain link couplings in there as you can see there's two in there one for the tendon one for the locomotive oh no sorry beg your pardon it's just one oh, I thought there was two in there but now there's actually one interestingly so oh yes of course there's already a hook on the tender so that's the chain link equipment to go on the loco silly me you do get two brake pipes though one for the front and the back and then you have that detail there which I am I have no idea what it is. It's that bit there. And it's that detail there. So, I don't know. 
I don't know where it goes. Good job I've got the instructions here. No. It. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, that's quite curious. Because interestingly, they both go on the front in the instructions, so there's probably already a bright pipe on the tender, I'd imagine, but the other detail parts, it doesn't say what they are or where they go. It, there might be just spares, actually, because sometimes they do do that. They do put spare details in with the models. But anyway, so we'll take the top off the packaging. And because the local and tender are connected, you got to lift it out with both hands. I've got some of that plastic packaging that's just come off the model. And I always do this because it just likes to be neat and tidy, basically. So we'll put that to one side. And what I will do is, to make this easier for me in this video, I will disconnect the locomotive from the tender. But first, I'm going to do it, give it a quick test run off camera. You will see how she runs later in this video. But for now, we're going to stick with the review for the detail part. Anyway, right, so I'll be back in the sick. Right, well, I'm back. I am pleased to report that this model does indeed work. But in order to see how well she runs, you'll have to find out until later on in this video. However, one thing I will have to say is, in terms of disconnecting the logo from the tender, that doesn't look like it's going to be easy, because usually with most models, the, with the wire and plug socket, which this does have, there's a socket just there in the tender, under the tender I should say rather. But, this model does not have that. Instead, well, there's a drawing for a start. So you can pretty much get an idea of what sort of tender connection this is going to be like. Because instead, the plug is located where the loco is, just under the cab. And... <laughs> To be honest, if I turn the lock upside down, you should be able to see what I'm talking about. Just there. That does not look like it's going to be easy to remove, and I'm not going to risk it. Because I do not want to damage this model in any way, shape or form. I could take that screw out there, but that's not going to do much use. Because it's for this bit here, which the drawbar connector slots onto, so it's not going to be much help doing that. So I'm going to have to bite the bullet with this video and I'm going to have to hold the model with two hands because normally what I like to do is to separate the tenders from the loco to use just one hand because I find it easier that way especially if I want to get to some certain areas of the detail such as the cab interior but for this video it's going to have to be with both hands so it's not going to be as easy but there we go we can't always have everything our own way, can we? But first I'll just give the model a dusting down. I mean, I discovered this after just turning it upside down in the loco cradle. But either way, I'm not going to complain too much about that. Because that happens. But anyway, here is the 7F in all its glory. But wow, just look at this. The detail is absolutely exquisite. And I should point out, it is actually the second day now. Because when I did the unboxing part before I went to reviewing the detail, it was in the evening, but I got called away with other things to do. 
good thing as well really because it's picking up the detail a bit more clearly on the camera especially with the sun being out but that's not important right now but where do we start other than the fact that there is quite a lot of detail on there it's so fragile because I don't want to snap any of it off but I know where we can start the weight meaning obviously the weight the model has it is really heavy and that's because the running board is made of metal and I do believe there is also weight inside the model so it gives it plenty of weight to pull a nice long train which means then it's not going to have as well it's going to have less trouble with traction because without the weight the model would not be able to pull a train and then it will be useless basically so that's why the weight is important because now that we don't have traction tyres the weight creates the traction but swiftly moving along to detail we have an M coupling in the front there which is weathered just like the model which is really nice you've got this detail here as well at the front of the bogey which is also weathered there's holes in the buffer beam for the detail to go into there's rivets on the buffer beam the buffers are metal and they're sprung loaded as well so if you like sprung buffers then you're going to be happy with this model there's lamp irons on the running board and there's also rivets as well just look at that that looks stunning you've got the slope cylinders as well with rivets on them and added drain cocks which have been factory fitted which is nice because they can be a pain to add when you have to add them yourself you've got the sanding gear as well and just look at the wall shots valve gear and the link motion and the side rods that is just so stunning <sighs> so there's a bit of dust then on the wheel I'll just take care of that and I can't wait to see that moving on camera and I just love how that rod there comes up and out of the running board just like on the real thing and that is a nice touch to have then you've got that detail there which is separately put on you've got the reversing lever there as well you can also see under the boiler which is a nice touch to have you've also got a nice chimney there which you can add a smoke generator unit in it if you wanted but that's not my thing as I don't add smoke generator units on my model so I'm not going to bother with that there's rivets on the smoke box as you can see clearly there you've also got fine metal handrails that are separately put on and you've got this detail here as well which is separately added and looks really nice you've got the dome there and you've got the turned metal whistle and safety valves and there's glazing in the cab windows like there should be because that's what we expect there's rivets on the cab roof and a vent that alas does not open but at least it's there and to be honest it doesn't really need to open either you've also got the footsteps there with rivets on them it looks really nice there's a small handrail on the side of the cab and there's rivets on the cab and handrails at the back of the cab there which are also made of metal and it looks nice then there's the smoke box door you've got rivets under the smoke box door as well as a lamp iron and a fine metal handrail and the loco is running number 53810 and there's a shed code under there, 82F. We've also got the Loco's running number at the side of the cab, which is crisply printed on, 53810. Then you also have footsteps that have got rivets on. Oh, I thought it spoke about them. 
Then you got the buffer beam there. The rear buffer beam, as I like to call it, with rivets on. Then that's the foot plate there for the crew to stand on. It's a folding one. Made of metal. I'll just lift that back up. There we go. And just look at the cab detail. The inside of the cab is painted cream, which is a rarity because not many models have that feature, and so that's nice to have. But the detail itself in there, you've got the gauges and the dials, the regulator and the levers, it's all painted. It looks really spectacular. You could add a drive and farm in there if you wanted to, but I don't really tend to do that. There are some models I do have where there's crew in the cab, but I don't tend to do it because I like to see the detail inside the cab. And once you've added a drive and farm in there, it does obscure it slightly, which then is a bit of a disappointment. You've also got the tender buffer beam there as well, the rear one. And the tender buffers, they're not sprung loaded, but they don't need to be. Then there's that lever for the water to go from the tender into the boiler. You've also got in the chute there, plastic coal load. And storage cabinets that also have rivets on them. So it's fair to say there's plenty of rivets on the model. And the weathering as well is just stunning. The livery is well applied, but the weathering really does help to bring it out. And the weathering has been airbrushed on. And it just looks superb. Then the tender, you've got the two metal handrails at the side there. Then you've got this detail here. which not only is being put on separately but it's also quite fragile and it also can move about. I'm not too sure what this detail is but there is a risk of breaking that off especially because I'm holding this model with both my hands so do be careful. There's also another metal handrail there just under that detail and footsteps as well. Rivets on the tender frame and the axle boxes and the springs and even the brake rigging as well is weathered. It doesn't need to be because you're never going to see it, but... <laughs> well, not when it's running on the track anyway, but they've weathered that and it looks nice. Then you've got an M coupling at the back, which is also weathered. You have got a rear brake pipe on that is already added. Metal sprung buffers like on the front. And there's that little hook on the back of the tender. These are the active steps for the crew to climb up to the water filler cap. Lamp pines on the back. And you've got that plate there that says 3,500 gallon. So it's a 3,500 gallon tender basically. And you've got another plate there that says. If the camera will focus. M4703. Oh, I'm not too sure what that is, but it's there. So there we go. You've got some more metal handrails at the side of the tender there. Rivets around the water filler caps, which bear in mind they don't open, but they're there anyway, and they don't need to open either. The light crest is crisply printed on the tender, and it looks really nice, and it's accurate as well. And also, you have this detail here on the coal load. Now, usually, I find you have to put that on separately, or should I say yourself. But no, it's been factory fitted in this case, which is nice and it makes a change. As for the coal load, I'm not sure if it's removable. It might be hard because this detail is in place. But what you can do is you can scatter your own coal load over the one that's already in the tender, which will look really nice. Then we'll just spin the model around to have a look at the other side. The detail is pretty much going to be the same as on the other side, but I'm going to show you the other side anyway. So you have another light crest, more handrails, that fragile detail again, plenty of rivets, and that rod that comes up and out of the running board. So it's basically got the same detail. Although, on this handrail here, 
it doesn't have that detail on, but everything else is the same, basically. So, all in all, she's a stunner. My only criticism would be, is the tender connection. You know, it would be nice if the plug was fitted where the tender was, so then we could remove the tender to hold the loco by hand, but now you've got that there, which looks like a very small circuit board of some sort, or some sort of socket, but I'm not going to take that out, for fear I might damage the model. But she's stunning though, and despite that one thing, the model does get away with it. Not just for its detail, but for how she runs. And also, you can also add extra details on if you wanted, as always. You could add crew in the cab if you wanted. Fire irons on the tender. You could add some permanent lamps. And what would be nice to do is to have ash coming out of the smoke box door. And that's something I will do, because I've done it with my other weathered models. There are two ways you can do it. One option is to use a white Posca paint pen. Or you can use this. <laughs> Poster paint. Which you can apply using either a cocktail stick or a needle. And that does add to the realism on the model. And once I do that, then that will just look brilliant. <laughs> And it will add to the weathered effect on it as well. So all we need to do now is to put it through its paces on the layout. Because you've yet to see how she runs. Well, you'll probably already know how the 7F already runs anyway. If you've already seen other people's videos on YouTube. But you've not seen how she runs yet in this video. So we'll do that just now. Okay, so we're now putting the 7F onto the track. Okay, so with that now done. Let's give it some juice to show you how smooth she can run. Look at that. That is just really smooth. And that's how slow she can go. Very impressive. I just can't put more words into my mouth. Okay, so let's get a go around the track. On her first proper run around the layout. Right, well, considering this is the first time she's been ran on the layout properly, because when I first tested her, I only ran her up and down that straight section I've just put her on. Just look at that link motion moving. There's no grinding noises or jerky movement, but then I shouldn't hope so. Because we pay good money for models like this, folks. So there she comes at the tunnel and passing the sidings with them in the wagon as well. Pass the signal box and through the station. And then she's passing the seaside. That still is in need of detail.
and then past the engine shed. Past the road and the airfield. Then under the bridge and once over the crossing, back through the tunnel. I just noticed there's a fly on the layer there. I'll deal with him later. So what we're going to do now is to get some close-ups of that. And then she's going to pull a train. So now we're going to get the 7F pulling the rake of chocolate and cream slash blood and custard rake. The brake coach is hidden in the tunnel, but like I say it's hidden, although you can just about glimpse it there. And the reason I've got the 7F to pull this rake is because they did actually pull passenger service, it's not just something they did in preservation because the Somerset and Dorset did use them for passenger services occasionally but either way let's get it rolling Look at that. This is nothing to her. She can pull them with these. It's almost as if they're not there. And you've got to admit, this Loco does look nice with these couches but for a two-way tow they were perfectly capable of hauling passenger services just as much as they were with freight let's get a shot of that link motion again look at that So what we'll do now is we'll get some close-up shots of that. Before we come to a conclusion.
So to sum up the 7F then by Batman, she's gorgeous, an absolute stunning model. All that detail, what you can pull, which speaks for itself, and the running quality. It just blows you away. And given this is a weathered model, it looks even more stunning as it brings out the realism of this model. Well done, Batman, for giving us such a stunning example of the 7F on the market. And I think that's all there is about to say, really. The words have been taken out of my mouth with this model.